It is time once again for Second Watch on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BamaOnline.com, back with you on the heels of Alabama's 34-24 defeat at the hands of the Texas Longhorns Saturday night at Bryant-Denny Stadium. We got a lot to get into. We got some good. We got some bad. We got some, well, we got some downright ugly, as you might expect, following that 10-point loss for the Crimson Tide, mostly we're going to be talking about the Alabama offense and the Alabama defense. Special teams really a bright spot for this team against Texas. So we'll waste no time. We'll get right into it, and we'll start with the opening possession of Saturday night's game. That belonged to Texas following Alabama winning the coin toss, deferring to the second half. And so it's Quinn Ewers and the Texas offense taking to the field. Alabama, as we look at it here, in a big nickel front with Justin Aboigby at one end. Uh, you got Dallas Turner as the Jack linebacker on the other side. Uh, interior, you've got Jaheim Otis and Tim Keenan. Uh, and then you're, again, you're in a nickel look, although Texas is technically in 12 personnel. You can see C.J. Baxter and a couple of those tight ends on the field, including Jatavian Sanders, who had a big, big game. A couple of wide receivers and A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. Quinn Ewers going to be by himself momentarily, just for a second, because as Steve Sarkeesian likes to do, plenty of pre-snap shifting and some different looks. So you'll see the Alabama defense as we run it here. You see your inside linebackers uh, trying to figure out, okay, where's the back? And on this opening look, you've got C.J. Baxter actually in a bunch formation into the boundary with a couple of tight ends in front of him. And so Texas is empty, and this is very much a part of Sark's script. Going to get a quick touch for the running back, Baxter, the touted true freshman, and there he goes. Going to run through a tackle attempt by Jalen Key. And you were wondering about Jalen Key's health along with Malachi Moore, and you saw it right there at the end of that play. Jalen Key sporting a brace of some sort on that leg after last week's injury. But he did give it a go. Uh, Then you see Alabama as you move into the next snap after that initial first down for Texas. And once again, Sark is going to show you that trips to the boundary. Same guys into the boundary. Uh, But then he's got the two wide receivers to the field. But Sark isn't going to stay in it. He's going to shift out of it. Here come those tight ends. Here comes Baxter in a pistol formation. And what you're going to get here is run action left. And then Ewers with the quick game on the tunnel back to Xavier Worthy. You've got leverage right down here for Malachi Moore against a, what, 350-pound offensive tackle. Malachi jumps inside. He's in pretty good shape there because Worthy's at a point where he's made his commitment. He's made his decision with that cut. And so here comes Caleb Downs, man, and just delivers after running the alley. So some good stuff from Caleb Downs, and really what you wanted to see from this defense early on. Now you move ahead a little bit in the possession, and you're at a second and eight for the Texas offense. You got an offset back. You've got, it looks like 11 personnel. Jatavian Sanders is off the ball here with a couple of wide receivers uh, down to the lower end. Alabama, once again, in its nickel look, this is, This is still a heavy nickel, even in second and eight. So you run it, you got play action with Ewers, and already we're seeing that he's got a pretty good bit of time. Now, sometimes Alabama rushed three early, sometimes four, but it's a quick flip out to Sanders. Want to go ahead and get him involved if you're Sark. And really good stuff right here from Malachi Moore. Now, as we know, on the field, this was called a catch and a fumble with a recovery by Texas, but look at that. Malachi in great shape. Outside shoulder, gets his head across, leads with the inside shoulder on the football. I don't know how you reverse that after what it was called on the field, but that's what happened. And so you're playing third and eight now, and Texas in 11 personnel. Alabama with six defensive backs on the field with a dime look. So Trey Amos at a corner down here at the bottom. You got Terry and Arnold at the star to go along with Kool-Aid McKinstry at a corner. And we're going to run it a little bit here. This is your your dime look. A little bit different. Malachi playing off back here with the two safeties deep. But 
here comes your give. And this is important early in the game, and it'll show up late in the game, unfortunately for Alabama, as we'll talk about a little bit later. But you're in dime personnel on a third and eight, and obviously something Sark wanted to do against that is run the football. And that's what Texas does here. But this is pretty good run defense when you're in a pass rush package. Alabama has three edge guys in its front five, I guess you could say here. And so Braswell gets a pretty good edge set right here at the moment of truth. And then you fill it. And you got Jamarian Latham in the game as a situational guy. And so you get a stop on third and eight. That's a good thing. The bad thing is you come out on offense and you got a second and 10 early on and you snap the football here and you can see the white helmet down at the bottom of the screen. And Jalen doesn't see, Jalen Milrow does not see that white helmet down there. See the white helmet now? That's called a trap coverage. And I know in real time, it may have looked like Baron 23 went a little rogue and just kind of gambled and took a shot on it. But I think this was film work by Texas. I think this was a design coverage. And Barron jumps in front of a ill-advised pass from Jalen. And Jalen with that defensive stat that no quarterback likes, the solo tackle at the end of the play. So rough start for Jalen Milrow, working out of a straight drop. And what you see here by design for Texas defensively is Texas is bringing five. But that's more of the bait than it is, let's try to get after this guy. You're bringing five in hopes that Jalen Milrow will think, I got to get this ball out of here quick. Because Texas on this play wants him to go where he went. Texas absolutely wants Jalen Milrow to go to Burton here. Because they got the trap set. And there it is, Barron with the early and easy pick. You look at the eyes, not just uh, Barron, but then also Jalen Ford, the inside linebacker. They're in a coverage where they are locked in on Jalen Milrow, and Jalen is locked in on number three. And there you go, the first of two interceptions for Jalen Milrow in the game. And so when you talk about the development of a quarterback in his third year, this is what concerns you, is that, This stuff is on tape, and again, I'm sure Texas had seen that Alabama liked to work that route against man coverage, and so when you bring five or you give the look of pressure, that's going to say to a quarterback, well, they're manning up when they're actually playing a trap coverage and they're able to get an easy pick of your quarterback. So third and goal for Texas now after getting the cookie from Milrow And this is very interesting here. You'll see Xavier Worthy motion in from the top of the screen here. See him there at the top? Barely see him. Jatavian Sanders is going to release and sit down, and he attracts a couple of guys. And I think between Kool-Aid and Caleb Downs, there might have been a little bit of confusion about who was passing off who to whom. Uh, But either way, Xavier Worthy with a drop there at the goal line. So we'll talk about Alabama's missed opportunities throughout this game, but just understand uh, Texas is saying some of those same things or said some of those same things um, during their staff meeting on Sunday too between coaches. So Alabama now with a fourth and three late in the first quarter, and you've got a bunch formation down here to the field. You've got Burton in the slot. Uh, to the right side of the formation, Nye Black uh, in a look here in that bunch. And you motion Jace McClellan back into the backfield. And now you're waiting on your snap. Kind of a pressure look a little bit from Texas. There's your snap. Jalen going to look left, come back to a mesh route. And it's a popular concept, not just for Alabama, but plenty of other programs too, plenty of other offenses. And I'm not sure here if Malik Benson was supposed to be in that area, but it worked out because you see here, you've got Burton and Nye Black crossing. And look at Benson right in the area too. That's a lot of Texas guys. You got four Texas guys within the hash marks there on a throw. Benson, to his credit, aggressive in going up and securing the catch. All's well that ends well. Just a curious instance there. Um, 
with the Alabama receivers in that route concept. So we move it ahead now, and it's early second quarter. You've got Texas, Alabama in a 3-3 game. First and 10, boy, this is Shotsville, USA for a guy like Sart. He gets a first and 10 between the 40s or anywhere in the vicinity of midfield. You have to be on high alert for just about anything. Here comes Worthy, some of that pre-snap motion that you might recall from Sark's days in Tuscaloosa. And there's your snap. Everything, it seems like, for Texas, or a lot of times anyway, starts with action to a back. And really, that's more of what I expected to see from Alabama in this game offensively. Didn't see it as much as I thought we would. If you saw the Indianapolis Colts in their game today against the Jacksonville Jaguars with Anthony Richardson, the Colts playing offensively with Richardson and his mobility and really starting every offensive playoff with some type of action to a back, some type of zone read look uh, that, that could put the defense in conflict, especially with Richardson's skill set was actually more of what I expected to see from Alabama on that side of the ball. Now, there were times in that game Sunday where Richardson did on straight drops and empties, uh, was asked to, to make throws from the pocket. But more often than not, uh, the plan centered on this guy can hurt you as a runner, so you need to be aware of that. But we run it here, and this is a lateral, actually. And boy, Xavier Worthy is a hell of an athlete because look at this. Look at this switch from receiver to passer, how quickly it happens. Catches, here comes a little pressure, and he just unloads a deep ball. And it's a well-thrown deep ball. And I think it was well-thrown enough that Terion Arnold panicked a little bit in the air. And, you know, that was the first of like three of those for Terion Arnold. And it felt like in all three of them, well, one came on a punt. He was working against a Texas gunner while Alabama was in punt return. And the, the same thing, he just grabs, grabs a, grabs a gunner for Texas, just like he grabbed a couple of Texas receivers. And on these pass interferences, I thought he was in pretty good shape. I didn't think he needed it, you know, thought he was in pretty good shape. But it is a pass interference call, and it's first and 10 again. And the ball is at the Alabama 44, and it is Steve Sarkeesian. So the shot is still very much in play. And what you get here is motion with Jatavian Sanders to the field, and you're going to get a shot. Xavier Worthy there in the top, in the slot, right there as he runs past Deontay Lawson. And he is sizing up Caleb Downs here, a safety. And what a ball from Quinn Ewers. You know, you can kind of critique Caleb Downs, I guess, on this play, but sometimes the ball is just too good and the other guy makes a hell of a throw. And this was a play a year ago in Austin that Texas wasn't able to convert on. They convert on it here. And again, pass rush with four guys still not really a factor here. Ewers is starting to get comfortable. I thought he was a little bit anxious early, probably the nerves. Things were sped up for him a little bit based on just the magnitude of the situation. But as the game wore on, you can see because Alabama just could not generate pass rush either organically or artificially via numbers, uh, Ewers got more comfortable as the night wore on. So Alabama back on offense after giving up the early deep ball. And here is a two-back look. We didn't see this against Middle Tennessee, but you got Jace McClellan and Roydell Williams on the field together. I like this. You know, look at this on early down against sub-package personnel. This is what both offenses wanted to do, it seemed like, for a lot of the night. Spread you out a little bit and then try to run the football against your nickel package. And this is good stuff from Darian Dawcourt on the right side. Look at J.C. Latham. He's in a good place. This is a good approach from Roydell Williams. Going to embrace the contact, run through it for an extra three yards. Five yards on a first down run between the tackles. That is a productive first down play. Some good stuff. So, you know, second and five, that's where you wanted to be throughout the night. Alabama wasn't there enough uh, between its ineffectiveness running the football, especially in the second half. I think Alabama had nine rushing yards in the second half Saturday night. 
And yes, there were sacks factored into that, but Alabama did not run the ball nearly as effectively in the second half as it did here in the first half. And you combine the penalties with that and you're behind the chains. And this offense just cannot, cannot sustain in a scenario where it is consistently like it is right now in third and seven as we run it here with 11 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Once again, you got that bunch concept to the top. Nye Black down here flexed out on his own. Jace McClellan in the backfield with Jalen Milrow. And it's a pretty good pickup initially by Jace McClellan, a Benda, the linebacker for Texas. But give Benda credit, he doesn't stay blocked. He doesn't stay down. And so Jalen doesn't like what he sees, obviously, on his initial look. And he's already been sped up a little bit in the first quarter. So now you're starting to see him abandon some things a little bit earlier. And Benda stays going, motor going and he's able to make the sack. You'll see it here again. You know, coaches, and it also depends on kind of what you have in play here. Is it a quick game throw? Is the ball supposed to come out now? Because if it is, McClellan's approach here is fine. You know, he's he's got his guy. Uh, But if it's a slower developing type of pass play, uh, if you don't get this guy, if you don't kneecap this guy, it's going to be tough to get the ball out. And Benda gets the job done there for the sack, as we see it here from the back view. Um, looks like man coverage, and Jalen's just not able to find a guy. And as we move along, we'll start to see, and I think we saw it even before this, Jalen's check down against man coverage right now is his legs. And he used it effectively from time to time. Runoff coverage, and then uh, he'd go get it with his legs. So, Second and seven in a 10-3 game for Texas, about midway through the second quarter. Got a pistol look, and here come those pullers, or at least they show that action. Some creative stuff from Sark here, man. You talk about a guy that was in his bag, and we talked about this throughout the week and on instant analysis last night. It was more than a script with Sark. He had plenty in the tank throughout the game. So here's a little reverse to Worthy, and you got Jatavian Sanders, who had motioned as if he was coming to the bottom of the screen, but then he reverses at the snap and he's going to wheel back out. And here you see Terry and Arnold and give Terry and Arnold a lot of credit, man. He has some plays that uh, aren't his best as was the case again on Saturday night, but the guy keeps playing. And this is a nice play here. This is sort of a game of chicken between Terry and Arnold, Jatavian Sanders and Xavier Worthy. He is, putting off the vibe of coming up and maintaining outside leverage. Uh, But right here at the last second, see how Worthy commits to the inside to make the cut. Tarion's able to get off of Sanders, who doesn't get there. And look at this tackle, because look at what's in front of Xavier Worthy if Tarion Arnold doesn't make this tackle. Yeah, you got Caleb Downs right there. But Worthy is going to be up at full stride at that point. And you got to think, even with an angle, it could have been tough for Caleb Downs. I'd never count Caleb Downs out on a potential one-on-one in the open field, but that was going to be a challenge. So a heck of a play for Terry and Arnold there uh, on the reverse to Xavier Worthy. There it is once again. Watch uh, the tight end for Texas. I don't know if we can see it from this angle, but he thought it was a touchdown. And again, you got the big offensive tackle, and there's Downs, and that's pretty much it. So big play by Arnold there. Third and four for Texas a little bit later. 721 left in the second quarter. Ewers going to work the quick game. And Alabama's actually in pretty good shape out here. You got two guys. There's Xavier Worthy. Right there, he is three yards short of the first down. And boy, Tarion brings the wood. He just doesn't bring the wrap up. And Jalen Key probably not 100% after the week he's had. Uh, He's not able to make the stop either. And so Worthy is able to pick up another seven or eight yards and it's a first down. Now we get a little bit later there in the second quarter, Alabama with a first and 10 now trailing 13 to three, getting late in the first half, Jalen Milrow, shotgun snap, Nye Black working the fake. I like this. I wanted more of this. 
quarterback draw, designed quarterback draw, not all, an extended play where Jalen takes off. I wanted more design runs throughout the night. And I know you say, well, Travis, you can't run the quarterback every play, but there certainly could have been more than what Alabama presented. I know Jalen had 15 rush attempts. Jalen was sacked five times. That was five of them. Uh, he had m several other scrambles. So when it came down to true design runs, or at least runs that he was attached to, uh, the number wasn't really what I anticipated it being in this game. First and 10 for Alabama, 329 left in the second quarter. Uh, here comes Jalen again, working the run game to Jace McClellan. Didn't like this play for a couple of reasons. Yes, Texas played it pretty well, but you started to get the sense that down 10, maybe some guys for Alabama were starting to press, starting to feel like, we're not sustaining much on offense, so I need to start thinking about home runs every time I touch it. And this is an example of, uh, uh, it's a one-yard loss on the play, but really it's a four-yard loss. Because when you watch this play in real time, like we just did, uh, you can see that there is at least three yards to be gained. So instead of second and seven, right now you're playing second and 11. And that's big. Again, for an offense like this, especially at this stage of the season, that is huge. So with a second and 11, here comes Texas with some pressure. Jace with a pickup up top. But you got an issue down here at the left tackle position. But also, look right there at the hash mark. Look at those three Alabama offensive linemen essentially on one guy. Now, you got 91 kind of coming back around, but he's more in spy mode. That's something Texas utilized some different guys for. See, he's not really coming on that game. It's like he is drifting back into the middle of the field. You actually got a couple of guys in that mode. But Burke isn't a threat there. But when you got three guys working against one, and Tyler Booker's one of them, and you get an inside rusher between Caden Proctor and Tyler Booker, this is what you get pressure. So things for this Alabama offensive line to still continue to clean up. And this isn't to say that it was a stellar night for Caden Proctor. It's just to say um, it wasn't a Joe Moore award-winning week uh, for the Alabama offensive line on Saturday night. So third and 11 now. Jalen in the situation of everybody in the stadium knowing it's going to be a pass, working off a drop back. And you can see some early pressure starting to develop. He's already starting to sense it at this point. He steps up into the pocket, and there's just nothing to work with. So he has to go get what he can get, and it's not going to be enough for a first down. So we look at it again, and you see Texas, they did a nice job of disguising their looks too. See, because they drop out for the most part here. Look at this. This is three-man pressure. And you got interior heat coming right between your center and right guard. And Jalen, again, he's already feeling it at this point. And so he is looking here, and there's really not a lot to work with. I guess if he had started his progression to the right, it looks like you've got Jermaine Burton that could sit down right there in the hole. You've got Jace McClellan out here as a check down, but he started left, and he never got back to his right because the pressure, or at least what he sensed as pressure, uh, was problematic. So now you've got a third and eight late in the second quarter. Alabama down 10, 13 to three. Here comes that bunch formation. And this is starting to get to the point where you're asking yourself, all right, how many more series is Nick going to go with Jalen before he gives Tyler Buckner a look? And so this is some important stuff here for Jalen Milrow. And this is a beauty of a ball. And again, give credit to an Alabama receiver for going up into traffic and attacking the football. Kobe Prentice this time. That's a good ball from Jalen, too. I'll show you why right here. Protection's pretty good. And it seemed like throughout the night, this was a good snap from Seth McLaughlin. But as the snaps were not great on more than one occasion, Jalen made some of his best throws off of tough snaps. This is a nice ball because look at the placement right here, away from the safety in this left-hand panel. 
Yeah, that's where it had to be. Dangerous, but on time, accurate, and a great catch by Kobe Prentice. So now you're working first and 10 from the Texas 32, late in the second quarter, under 45 seconds. Jalen immediately looking to his left. Now he kind of eyeballs Roydell Williams there in the middle, but you see Roydell get picked up in the check down. And so uh, Jalen's going to move out to his left, and there he's got a he's got a release guy. And Kobe Prentice, who makes the first guy miss. Good sequence here from Kobe. Malik Benson running off coverage, creating some space. This is what we expected out of Malik Benson really from the outset of his Alabama career because you watch his junior college tape there at Hutchinson, and even when he wasn't catching balls on the JC level, he was rec- re- uh, creating a lot of space. And there's some space for Kobe Prentice to work with after the catch, go get the first down. First and 10 for Alabama now from the Texas 17. I think that's Isaiah Bond coming on late. You got 11 personnel and Jalen trying to get a read on what he's going to do here. Here comes the pressure. Here comes the uh, corner cat and also bringing the star defensive back to the other side. And you're essentially in five-man protection. So ball has to come out hot. And you see Nye Black working against uh, Benda there, the linebacker. And you've got Roydell on the rail. This is a favorite concept of Alabama. Probably remember it more for Najee Harris running it as much as anyone. Maybe, maybe Josh Jacobs. And the ball placement this time a little bit behind Roydell. Now, I'm not sure Roydell scores even if the ball is on his front shoulder. But Watts, the corner here, kind of makes it a tougher throw. And Jalen's not a guy who adjusts the arm angle very much. I mean, it's going to come out on the plane uh, consistently, uh, one play to the next. And so this ball's on the back shoulder. And uh, Roydell has to make the sure grab, and he ends up on the ground. So when you think about this sequence here, and you're going to see some of it right here on a third and seven play, four-man rush, interior pressure. You got Tyler Booker on the ground. Look at Tyler. Jalen does a great job of escaping it, runs to his right, and here he gets fortunate. Alabama gets fortunate and unfortunate simultaneously. (laughs) Because Jalen Ford could have picked that pass off. Jalen Ford's picked off like five passes in the last season and two games now. Goes off his hands. How about Jermaine Burton? Right place at the right time. Good night for Jermaine Burton. Engaged. Did some good things. But as we know, uh, you've got an ineligible receiver downfield on that play. It was Darian Dalcourt. I went back and watched it. You've got three yards to work with, and looking at the replay, it looked like Darian was about four. It was was pretty close. So between the missed opportunity maybe to Roydell and then the touchdown that went for naught, you settle for three there. Uh, That's a couple of different touchdowns you scored on the same possession or could have scored on the same possession, and instead you end up with three points, and they end up big in a game that you end up losing by 10. So Early in the third quarter, again, critical possessions for Jalen Milrow. You got the bunch formation here on the bottom hash. Tremaine Burton singled up to the top. We got a low snap once again. Uh, Jace is going to release, so you're in a five-man protection. Jalen stands in there, and here is Isaiah Bond working one of those vertical routes, matched up on a sub- DB slash safety. That's going to be a win. It's kind of a delayed go route from Isaiah. Gave his two guys time to sort of work their thing and create some space. And then he really had some room to work. Ball isn't perfect, but how about that adjustment by Isaiah Bond? That's really nice stuff in finishing that play. Second and seven now for Alabama at the Texas 32. Jalen on a straight drop. Yeah, drift in a little bit. Here comes the flag. Here comes another touchdown pass to Jermaine Burton that goes for naught. And this was a hold that was called on Caden Proctor, and that's another one in watching it back that um, I, I'm not saying Caden didn't hold throughout the night. I, I think he did. Um, but that one was that one was close at least. 
So you get into a field goal situation, and here is your game MVP for the Alabama Crimson Tide, Will Reichert. 51-yarder, um, burn up to hold it. Watch the pressure off the left side of the Texas field goal extra point team. Watch 91 here. I think that's Ethan Burke. Look at him. I mean, he's there. But look at the lift on this kick from Will Reichard. This is 51 yards. 95% of the college kickers out there, that's blocked because they have to drive that thing from 51 yards. They're not getting that kind of lift on a 51-yard field goal. And Burke on the replay, you can see him. He kind of looks to the heavens like, how did I not block that? I mean, you know he felt the laces whiz by his fingertips on that 51-yarder by Will Reichard. And we've got a backward hats guy here. It's getting serious. It's 13-9 game, third quarter. Hat's got to go on backwards at that point. So there's 8.05 left in the third now, third quarter now. Third and four for Alabama at its own 40. And once again, you've got some 11 personnel with Nye Black in line to the top of the formation. Another low snap. I mean, just a bullet. And boy, you've got a manned up. And look at this opportunity just outside the finger uh, nails of Jace McClellan. And yeah, Jalen's got to hit that throw. But when you're already feeling as if you're sped up, these low snaps are problematic, man. And when, when you have to commit yourself to just fielding snaps on a consistent basis, uh, that can throw things off. We see it typically with kickers. You know, bad snap, kind of the throws off the timing, and then the kick suffers as a result. Um Jalen, you can see he sped up a little bit here. Didn't really set his feet. I think he felt like, hey, I'm I'm hurried. I got to get rid of this thing. And he didn't. He had plenty of time. And he has got Jace for, I'm going to guess that six. I guess Thompson, the safety right there, could have got over. I don't know. Jace can go, as we saw in Austin a year ago. So now you're in a spread formation, at least pre-snap. And you're going to run it third and 15 from the Alabama 19-yard line. Jalen in a straight drop and an early win against Caden Proctor. And that's Hill, the true freshman for Texas with a clean win over Caden Proctor. Caden's going to get better, but, you know, Saturday night was not about losing for Caden Proctor. It was about learning. He's going to be fine. But, uh, y y again, you talk about the jump that, you know, some of these guys have to make from high school ball to the SEC or to the elite Power Five level, and all due respect to Iowa high school football, but you know, Caden didn't even have the benefit of coming from Georgia or Texas or Alabama or Florida uh, in doing this. And throughout the night, you know, it wasn't like Tommy Reese attached a tight end and or a back to that side in pass protection. I mean, there was plenty of occasions where Caden was asked to to get it done one-on-one. -on -one. Now, some of those, I think the expectation was the ball was going to come out quick, and that didn't always happen either. Um, so there were some variables in play there, I'm pretty sure. 458 left in the third. Texas ball. This is a staple of Sarks. We've seen it at Alabama, kind of a pistol look. See this puller in pass protection? It gives that look of run. So if you got people with eyes in the backfield that are maybe keying those things, it can help you win on some routes. It can definitely hold those linebackers in there, and then you can work the crossing routes. But it's play action, and here it is. A nice ball from Ewers to A.D. Mitchell, but what a nice play once again for Tarion and Arnold. It can be a little bit boom or bust with Tarion, but this is good, man. When he's able to play downhill like that, uh, he can get it done. He can get it done on, in the deeper game. He just got to trust himself more. Uh, just be a little more confident in his technique. Uh, so now it's second and 10 for the Longhorns. And this is in the second half. Now, remember what we talked about in the first half when Alabama did a nice job from its dime package of slowing down the Texas run game? Didn't see that as much in this half. You, you, you see some work getting done here for Texas. Jihad Campbell, it was good to see him out there after missing the opener. Uh, but he's in the wash right there. Sanders gets enough 
a Justin Aboigbe. And so now you're starting to see some real positive runs. Nothing huge for Texas, but I thought Texas was effective enough in the second half, especially late in the game when it was time to put it away, as we'll get to. So this is a fourth and one play. And if you watch this in real time and you didn't think about Ole Miss 2015, I don't know what to tell you because it reeked of some of the stuff that happened in that one eight seasons ago. Crazy to say that out loud. So it's a sneak for Ewers on fourth and one. Uh, ball goes through him on the ground, back picks it up. Good thing that these Alabama guys kept playing over here, like Kool-Aid and Dallas Turner, uh, because that could have gone big. Instead, it's still uh, less than fortunate for Alabama that it ends up a first down. Uh, new set of downs for Texas, but a few short plays later, now the Horns are in fourth and two, and Dallas Turner pre-snap is misaligned. Somebody's misaligned. He's running to the other side. Ewers in Texas sees it. They're gonna. They want to kind of go there, and so they snap the football. This is good stuff, though, from Damon Payne right in the center. Look at Damon Payne right there between the right guard and the center. Disruptive, kind of forces the back away and not able to just sort of make that foot in the ground immediate cut and give Dallas a lot of credit. He was late getting over there, but when he got over there, the hands were violent. Watch his hands here on Jatavian Sanders. Wop, look at this. I mean, he just, he reps him out and he keeps that outside shoulder free. So even though the back kind of veers left, he's able to get enough and some real strength there. And he gets some help. Deontay Lawson, give Deontay credit. You know, too often in the last year or so, we've seen Alabama defenders become observers in situations like that. Help, finish the play. Look at the line to make. Look at Deontay. This is good. You can build on that. Good stuff on the fourth down stop for Alabama. And it started, again, with Damon Payne being disruptive. Alabama certainly was not disruptive enough. Two tackles for loss for Alabama in the game against Texas Saturday night, one of those by a defensive back. So Alabama with the football late in the third quarter. You got that bunch formation again down here on the hash. Um, one of those guys is Amari Nyblack to go along with Jermaine Burton. I think that's Isaiah Bond. Uh, Jalen in the gun with the back offset. We're going to run it here. Making a little bit of a check here. And you also see um, you know, Darian Dahlcourt kind of helps out with that sometimes too. Back motions out to the flat. So now you're empty. Texas going to bring four with a spy sitting in there. But it's still man coverage on the outside. And there's six yards to get. And Jalen sees that he's got a wide receiver running a guy off to the top. And I think that alerts him. That's his check down key to his legs. When he sees that, and even though Benda is sitting here at the 43 for Texas, Milrose thinking, I can win that race. And he does. Goes and gets the first down here for a new set of downs. And by the way, poor Bo Davis on that play. The Texas defensive line coach previously of – Alabama, he takes, I'm pretty sure that's Bo right there. Watch Bo on the sideline for Texas. He, friendly fire for Bo. Oof. It's a tough one for Bo Davis. I think he was okay, though. Probably felt pretty good after that handshake with Nick Saban at midfield. Alabama down 13-9. to And again, remember, post game we heard from Nick Saban, this was a point in the game where apparently Nick was at least considering going to Tyler Buckner. So this entire quarter just – Incredibly important to Jalen Milrow. And this is some vintage stuff from Milrow. Uh, he gets the early pressure. This is a tough ass for an Mari Nyblack and one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Gets just enough of a push, but it's Jalen who uses his feet to sort of get himself in position to make this throw that sets the whole thing up. And then it is a dime Jermaine Burton with his third touchdown catch of the game, except this one actually counted. So that's a big throw for Jalen Milrow. Alabama goes into the lead, and 
amazingly, Alabama is up three at this point. And you're thinking, ah, it doesn't really feel like it. Kind of felt like when Alabama was up, what, five on Georgia in the college football playoff national championship game a couple of years ago in Indianapolis. Yeah, Alabama was up, but I don't think Alabama people were feeling especially great about it, especially in that game because you didn't have Jamison Williams at that point. You were really depleted from an offensive skill player perspective. So here comes Sark in his first and 10. Where's the ball at? Ball is at the 43 of Texas. And coming out, you know Sark, again, is thinking shot. Alabama a little bit late getting lined up. This is nickel personnel. Sanders motions back into the formation. Here's that pistol and pull with a protector coming around. Remember when Mac Jones hit this one on like the first play of the game or something like that against Michigan in the Citrus Bowl to Jerry Judy at the end of the 2019 season? Same play, same protection for sure in action, play action. Uh, Ewers at this point is pretty comfortable. Now Latham gets, gets inside and he's in a pretty good place there. But again, Ewers at this point in the game, he's relaxed. So even flash pressure like this isn't going to impact him too much. And here is a wide open Jatavian Sanders uh, over here. And it's, it's one thing to catch that ball. It's another to be able to turn it up and do what he can do at his size. Um, you'll see it again here on the replay. There's the play action. Here comes the puller. Jamarian wins inside, hands up. But right over here on about the hash mark, I think that's Caleb Downs. Um, and then you've got uh, Trez Marshall. And they both come up on C.J. Baxter. In fact, you've got three backs or three defenders right here. You can see Deontay underneath too. Um, but with those two guys attracted to the back, Sanders wide open. And it sets up this first and goal for Texas. And this kind of defined the rest of the game. When Alabama would score, Texas had an answer. And in the form of a touchdown, not field goals. And so you got a first and goal here. Here's some play action to the back. Eh, nothing in the way of pressure. Uh, and so what you've got here between Ewers and a touchdown is Caleb Downs at about the three-yard line. And he's almost like trying to play an inbound passer in basketball with a guy wide open for a layup behind him because this was a layup to A.D. Mitchell, who wins easily going against Kool-Aid McKinstry there. And Texas takes a lead. It would not relinquish. Again, you can see the position that uh, Downs finds himself in. Just not really anything in the way of pressure. Downs is in a pretty good spot right there but understanding that Ewers has got so much room to kind of lead that ball to Mitchell, that's going to be an easy touchdown. And it is for the Texas Longhorns who go up 20 to 16. So Alabama football early in the fourth, third and 17. There's that bunch formation again on the hash. Another one of those sort of Mariano Rivera, 98 mile an hour, um, not a splitter. What did Mariano Rivero throw? It wasn't a slider. It wasn't a splitter. I'm sure somebody will. It was a cutter. Yeah, it was the Mariano cutter. Uh, Jalen gets another cutter. Um, protection, okay, but it's only a three-man rush. He steps into this one. Look at Jalen step into it. And this is one of those throws that keep you going with Jalen. And it's also... Another one of these routes where you're wondering, is Malik Benson supposed to be in the middle of those two Alabama receivers? And when we watch it on the uh, replay, at this point, you don't care. Somebody go make a play, right? Watch uh, Malik here. You've got, watch Malik and Ja'Cory Brooks at the hash and just on the right side of the hash. They run the same route. <laughs> and Jayla just says, I'm throwing it to the inside guy, and it's a great ball. And Benson goes up, makes a catch. Good night for Alabama receivers, man. They answered the bell. You know, I don't think there's any doubt about that. So you got a first and 10 now 
Jalen working off the back. I like that whenever he works off the back. And there's a nice ball to Kobe Prentice. Kobe with a solid night of his own. Here you're going to see it once again. Benson running off coverage on the outside. The underneath defender takes Jace out in the flat, and then you've got a wide open hole. On time and accurate. And uh, Milrow's eyes didn't deceive him there. That's a good ball. Good stuff by Kobe Prentice in terms of taking that route inside, creating some space for himself to the sideline. Another issue with a snap. Talked about it earlier. It did kind of feel like, though, Jalen did some of his best work off of these situations. It's like he he just had to play instead of really give much thought to some things. And um, not so much on the miss to Jace on the rail on the play we outlined earlier, but here's another one. Big ball to uh, Amari on the crossing route. And I thought there was a good bit of zone yeah, Texas mixed in some man, but it felt almost disrespectful. Like Texas felt like, you know what? We can we can keep our eyes in the backfield, play a lot of zone against you guys because we don't think you can run the ball well enough. Even if we do play uh, cover two or or you know zone a lot of the night, we don't feel like you can hurt us with your run game. And for the most part, if that was the thought, they were proven true. This is good stuff though. How about Isaiah Bond? On first watch, I thought he may have gotten a block in the back, but on the replay, he looked pretty good. He gets a twofer here, and Armari Nyblack for the second week in a row is into the end zone. Here you go again. Here's your pass rush. Ball's on the ground. Now, give the offensive line credit because they took care of business here. That free runner that got there late, more of a result of – the time it took probably for Jalen to clean up the ball on the ground. But pretty good protection and a really nice ball to Amari Nyblack, and he splits these two guys. And then here comes the two for one right here. Yep. Doink. Two guys. Touchdown, Amari Nyblack. So you're going to go for two here, and you're going to work Isaiah Bond down here at the three across. So here comes the four-man rush for Texas. You can see Bond at the goal line right here. If he sat it down, he's really open. But he sees, at least in my opinion, he does. He sees that Jalen is working the left side. So it's not just defenders who work off of Jalen's eyes. I think it's also his receivers from time to time. So he's thinking, I got to get over here and get into the mix. And he does. And this is gutty <laughs> from Isaiah Bond. I thought he showed it a couple times. I thought Alabama's receivers did it for the most part. And he goes up and attacks the football, takes the somersault, scary landing, but looks like he's going to be okay. So, you know, could have been a big moment in the game there. Felt like it. 27-24, need a stop here. Second and 10 for Texas. Alabama with the four-man pass rush. Jaheim Otis getting some push of the pocket there, kind of like Latham earlier, flash pressure. And at this point, though, Quinn Ewers has reached a comfort level where that's just not going to affect him. You have got to physically alter his approach or what he thinks he has. And so here you go with A.D. Mitchell wide open down the middle of the field. And we'll watch it again. You got Trey Amos in the game at the one corner. Yeah, I feel you, buddy. How about that look for the Alabama fan? Yep, it's time to head over to Heat Pizza Bar for a Thai chicken pizza and a Styles. Yeah, uh, I know what you're thinking, pal. But you'll see it here. Um, not sure if this was middle of the field coverage for, for downs, but you can see him drive up on the crosser right there. And either he was supposed to have the deep middle or Trey Amos was supposed to continue to run with A.D. Mitchell. The one thing I'm certain of, they don't have a coverage where you just let A.D. Mitchell go. Because going into this game, what did you know about Texas's wide receivers? Xavier Worthy, Adane Mitchell, um, Jatavian Sanders at the tight end position. You had to account for those guys. You knew that going into this game. And they still combined for over 260 receiving yards. 
on, on Saturday night. Now, some of that you just credit Texas with. And these are great, great players. And uh, Ewers got it going on the deep ball because he didn't have it going against Rice. But uh, he seems to play well when he's a- available against Alabama, Quinn Ewers. So Alabama now in the chase mode again. You know, answer, and then Texas comes with the answer. And so it's really kind of desperation mode at this point. Um, going empty here with Jalen. Four-man rush for Texas. Jalen trying to survey things, but nothing available to him down the field. I guess maybe up here at the top, he could have had something early. Uh, but in third and 10, and you're down 10, you're trying to hit something up the field. And here's the pass rush look again. This is Hill, the true freshman, working against J.C. Latham. Initially, it looks like it's going to be maybe a tackle in game, but it never really developed into that. And Hill just comes inside, and at that point, Jalen's eyes come down, and when his eyes come down, that's typically the end of the, the possibilities on a design pass play. And that's the battle, I think, that Jalen continues to fight, especially if he gets pressure early, early in the game. You know, can he continue to keep his eyes up the field and maintain that passer status? So this is uh, late in the game. This kind of this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier in the game. Third and longish, and you've got your sub package personnel on the field, and so that means I guess Alabama's dime right here, maybe nickel. No, let me let me see. Let me run it. Yeah, that's dime. That's dime. And uh, you're working the the pass rush package, thinking you got to get after Quinn Ewers, and Sark goofy foots you and runs it. Now, he tried it earlier in the game. Alabama did a good job, but that's the difference between early in the game and when you're down 10 late. You know, desperation mode puts you in a different level of vulnerability because you'll see it here. Deontay, right there over the top of the left guard, I'm sure he's thinking, I, I got to get after Ewers here. And so he jumps out of a gap thinking he's going to maybe get after the quarterback, and then you look at the space. And so literally right up the A there with the run game for Texas. And that essentially ended it for Alabama in this one. So there you go. 34-24 Texas, and it's been another Second watch here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. We got continuing coverage from the game for you at BamaOnline.com. Charlie Potter, Clint Lamb, Jimmy Stein, myself from the team perspective. Huge recruiting weekend on campus. So site publisher Tim Watts, uh, veteran of the Alabama recruiting wars. Mr. Andrew Bone also involved in that and Joseph Hastings as well. So wall-to-wall coverage available to you at BamaOnline.com. And again, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's free. And by the way, this will also upload to the Bama Online podcast. So check out the Bama Online podcast as well. Travis Ryer, thanking you once again for joining us here on Second Watch. And until next time, so long, everybody.